to consolidate their GCSE and A-level courses, we set year 11 and 13, the Beyond the Spec Challenge over Easter and the last couple of weeks to research a topic beyond the syllabus requirements uh, and to explore something of their own interests. We had a range of diverse topics from a detailed examination of Bhutan, considering glaciated landscapes and human activity, um, is Britain at risk from a tsunami, uh, whether we live in a borderless world, and from year 11, the impact of climate change on food security, super volcanoes, whether we can predict earthquakes using radioactive isotopes of radon and thoron, uh, a consideration of the geographical factors that have controlled the spread of COVID-19 across the UK, and a detailed examination of the controversies surrounding HS2. These have been incredibly impressive pieces of work, and we have awarded some prizes to the top five year 13 and uh, top five year 11s. The prizes go to, in year 13, John Taylor as the overall winner, Blythe Berry, Tash Drover and Abby Brader. And in year 11, we have awarded the top five prizes to Dan Smith, Ben Davis, Isaac Mead, Ollie Kettle and Flora Sprague. We'd now like to show you the winning piece of work from year 11, which is Dan Smith on super volcanoes. Around 65 million years ago, an asteroid hit Mexico and caused one of the most famous mass extinction events known by mankind. It threw debris into the air, caused massive tidal waves, and killed most of the dinosaurs. This event was caused by an asteroid strike. NASA has stated that a cataclysmic supervolcano eruption is more likely to happen in the near future than an asteroid impact, but could have similar consequences. Now you might be wondering, what is a supervolcano? Supervolcanoes are defined as volcanoes that have a volcanic explosivity index of 8, which means that the volcanic eruption could give off more than 1,000 cubic kilometres of tephra, which is volcanic material. For reference, this is enough material to cover London in over 600 metres of debris, and is nearly 800 times more material than was given off in the 1918 Mount St. Helens eruption. Supervolcanoes form when magma rises from the mantle and into the crust, but cannot break through the crust. This results in the build-up of a lava pool, which builds in pressure until it breaks through the crust in a supervolcanic eruption. These can build up in volcanic hotspots, like the supervolcano in Yellowstone National Park, or at subduction zones, which is where the oceanic crust is subducted under the continental crust. Now, what would be the consequences of a supervolcanic eruption? Well, they'd actually be very similar to the consequences of an asteroid strike, or the side effects of nuclear warfare. Due to the vast output of material into the atmosphere, the sun's light would likely be blocked out enough to significantly reduce crop yield and could potentially trigger a little ice age. None of this is very good for humans because most of us don't like the idea of a potential mass extinction event. Now, do we need to worry about supervolcanoes? Probably not, not for a while at least. Although Yellowstone erupted 60,000 years ago, and 60,000 years ago before that, eruptions of supervolcanoes are usually not as super as the volcano is capable of. And another reassuring fact is that these volcanoes typically show signs of eruption years or even centuries in advance of their eruption, and we will likely have plenty of warning before they do. These are the reasons most volcanologists are not afraid of supervolcanoes and why you should not be either.